<laughs> um, hello everybody. I haven't seen a lot of you in a long time, but I'm sure what I'm going to say a lot of you can relate to. Um, I was working in a record shop in Hackney and I came to work one day and someone said, there you go. Bro. And it, it never changes. And um, anyway, let me just crack on because it's hot. And uh, one of the boys who worked in a record shop said, Tosca was looking for you, mate. I said, oh, Tosca, it's a bit flash that way, isn't he? Uh, what does he want? And he came up and he said, uh, do you want to be on Kiss FM? I said, hang on, that's that station with my hero DJ Paul Anderson and Norman Jay. Um, hell yeah, I didn't know how to broadcast, I didn't know anything, I just liked music, I loved music, and it was as simple as that. Um, so I met Gordon, and the first show I did was on Woolworth Road in <laughs> Labrox. Do you remember that, anyone? Yeah. I was in South London, so I was scared. I was walking up and down Woolworth Road thinking, when am I going to slip in there? <laughs> East London boy, not really comfortable. Got in there, I thought I'd start my first show with a bang. So I did a competition. Um, by the way, I turned the station off, I had the latest show on the station. That's what, I had the late night slot, and then Gordon said afterwards, just turn it off and get out. So if you remember, on my first show I did a competition, I had a copy of um, Across the Tracks, the Norman, tracks. <laughs> the original 7-inch. Worth about 50 quid in them days. Do this competition, put it out there, write me a letter, enter the competition. As soon as my show finished, the phone rang, it's Gordon, you ain't giving that fucking record away, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that was Gordon. So, I could tell you a million stories about Gordon, but I'll say this, when most of us in here started DJing, we had full-time jobs, right? No one dreamt that you could be a DJ for a living. I certainly didn't think I could make a living out of DJing, I just was compelled to play music. And I, I have to say, Kiss FM, as a pirate, the, the requirement to get on that station wasn't whether you were a slick DJ, it's whether you had music. Really simple. It was like a community of people telling other people, you need to be on this station. Um, my good friend Jazzy B, obviously, big music man, ended up on Kiss as well. I remember our meetings. They're the things I'll remember the most. Gordon <laughs> patrolling up and down. The cold cart crew sitting there saying, we just done a remix for Eric B and Rakim. And you're like, what? Do you remember that meeting? And they played the tune and we're like, why Richie Rich playing Salsa House? Or Gordon telling us about sticking together and trying and getting a license. And half of us saying, nah, the DTR conning us. Don't do it, Gordon. And Gordon keeping us 25 to 30 street egos in check, keeping us together because he had a vision. And that vision was to, well, we can see what's happened today. I owe not all of my career, Gordon, but most of it to you. I'm never going to give you that. But, you know, I do remember loving when KISS opened on Holloway Road. I felt that KISS FM, for anyone who was part of that, what we had in that building, the world wasn't ready for. The world outside wasn't like being in KISS. When I was outside, I was one thing, as soon as I walked through the door, it was a whole nother world. It was, it was the ideal world. And me and Steve Jackson running around every day, causing Claudine nightmares, running up and down, terrorizing everybody. It was so much fun, then running over to Steve's house to play, I don't know, Super Mario or something, Steve. I don't know what we did. But they were the best days of my life. Also the worst paid days of my life, but the best <laughs> days of my life. Um, and I owe a lot of it to Gordon. The day I left KISS, I'll never forget, we had some conversations, it was very emotional between me and Gordon, because Gordon knew I'd do anything for KISS FM. I absolutely loved the station, so much so that one day I put it in my girlfriend's flat. <laughs> when Gordon said, uh, again, some of you may have been at that meeting, lads, we might have to shut down KISS FM. We haven't got anywhere to go, we've been everywhere, unless anyone's got a flat. And I said, well, 19 floors up, Stephanie, my girlfriend's got a flat. I've just moved in with her. And so we cut about 20 sets of keys, did we? <laughs> and when Stephanie came home, she was in for a bit of a surprise. The toilet was never the same again. The kitchen was never the same again. And as soon as Kiss left, I was out. <laughs> I was done. But no, Gordon, you deserve this. The fact it's the same day, uh, my first hero, DJ Paul Anderson, gets it as well, is uh, fitting. I think your 
<laughs> your effect on the dance music industry is immeasurable. I don't. I think you're the unsung hero of dance music. Other people get the accolades, but and I think a lot of the DJs. A lot of the DJs here are thankful for you constantly giving us an outlet to express ourselves because that's all we ever wanted to do. Some of us, yeah, fair enough, made a good living out of it, but the majority of DJs do it for the love. And you epitomise that 100%, mate. Love you to death. You still owe me. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell people the one thing you did to me that destroyed my life, but other than that, I still love you. And that's why you're amazing. So give it up for Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Love it. Thank you. Amazing stuff there, of course.